In this video, I'd like to show you how it appears to me, which is that the Star Citizen developers are, I think, intentionally reducing the quality of the helmet designs. So let's start at the beginning. So this is a helmet in Squadron 42, and I think similar variants exist in Star Citizen. I think the Odyssey helmet looks similar to that. And I think that's a really interesting and functional sci-fi design. And here's what I think makes a good helmet, and you can see it in this picture. You have the outer structure, then you have a visor where you can see the face of the character, and you have the interior. And I think, not sure from when they designed this helmet, but I think it was early in the game's development, when they were not sure of getting as much player funding as, as they're getting. However, unfortunately, after that, it goes downhill. Because at some point, they probably figured out that they're making money no matter what they're doing, and they're not reducing the quality of the product to uh, create more volume of things they can sell. For that, I've prepared this spreadsheet. So this is a list of all currently available helmets in Star Citizen. And you can see here the helmet, and whether it has a visible interior, yes or no, and the version number. And I chose 3.3 uh, as a as a baseline. Some of those helmets are much older, and they've been in the game for many years before that. I think 3.3 is, I think, early 2018. Okay, so let's take a look. Notice the helmets here. Most of them have a visible interior. By visible interior, I mean where you can see the character's face. There are some helmets where you can see the eyes of the character, but nothing else. And I count those as not having a visible interior, because you can only see the eyes and not the interior structure of the helmet. Okay, so we got the early helmets. Most of them have yes, 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 yes. And it starts with no, and as you progress, notice what's happening. Most helmets do not have an interior. I think something over here started to happen. I think that's where the developers started to experiment with reducing the quality of the helmet designs. Because that's over here, that's one of those, I would call them Halloween helmets. That's the death's head, which is like the, um, I think it's a skull of, of a horse or some type of animal. And I think the inspiration for them to drop the quality at that point was Fortnite. And if you don't know what Fortnite is, Fortnite is a one of those accessible multiplayer games that's that's designed so anybody can play it. And what they also do is they attach themselves to current pop culture trends, which means um, the new Star Wars series, The Book of Boba Fett. I haven't watched it myself. I just know it from screenshots. And... <clears throat> what they do is they attach themselves to the to the franchise and they probably pay a licensing fee because over here it says Lucasfilm Limited. No. <clears throat> and then they can put skins of that into the game so players who like a particular pop culture trend, a movie or series or something else, they can play as a character in the video game and that's a concept. And there's probably a large amount of of money to be made with it because Fortnite is hugely successful. Now, unfortunately for Star, Wars, for Star Citizen, I think the financial incentive is too big for the Star Citizen developers to resist. And so what they're probably doing right now is they are... <clears throat> Here's how I imagine it would happen. So Chris Roberts thinks, okay, wait a minute, how can we get some of the Fortnite money without having to pay the licensing fees for, for example, Star Wars products? So my guess is he went to his artist and said, okay, make make helmets and armors that look like they look like Star Wars. However, keep it far away from it so it entices players to to evoke feelings of Star Wars in players. However, to avoid evoking feelings of copyright infringement in Star Wars lawyers. Let's look at the evidence for that. Okay, first the obvious example you get over here, those are Paladin helmets. Yeah, they, very closely resemble the, the classic Boba Fett or Stormtrooper variant of helmets, like which it, them itself are probably based on medieval gothic helmets. Notice the, the shape is exaggerated to be pointy, just to blur the line between being too similar to Star Wars. However, the, uh, the similarity is very obvious over here. Then there's also, um, where's that picture? Notice here, this video is not about armor pieces, but I just included here because of, it's part of the argument. Notice this. Um, 
Chest armor, notice the bandolier and notice the belt. Notice here, bandolier, belt. Notice the shape of the armor. Notice, okay, this is all leather. Or this is plastic over here, or some ceramic or steel or whatever they're using. Now notice the similarity here. And notice how they're avoiding certain similarities on purpose. Like, for example, I think it's a dead giveaway that you have this over here and this over here. And then you have this, this boxy shape of the chest plate. And notice how they're avoiding that similarity because it would be too close to Star Wars. So what they're doing is they're separating those pieces out over here just to blur the line so it doesn't look too familiar enough to get sued for or get into trouble for possible uh, copyright infringement. However, it still closely resembles Star Wars on a subconscious level. Like if I see just a chest piece without a helmet, I'm immediately thinking Star Wars. And the helmet over here, it's basically a, a mix between a Doom Slayer helmet and a Star Wars helmet. Because the helmet, uh, the volume of the shape is, is clearly the Doom Slayer helmet from the Doom games, if you, if you know those. <clears throat> and the helmet slit design is clearly Star Wars. Which means they included that into, into the uh, emotions too, so when you see the helmet you want to get it. And the next example, which is a bit more obscure, is Star Wars, uh, the Star Citizen Mandible helmet. Okay, now this looks very familiar to me, to this helmet. That's, I think, from the Book of Boba Fett. That's a female design. Notice here. It has that more narrow feminine shape of, of the viewing slit, which is characteristic for Star Wars armor designs. And notice that, that shape over here. Because look at, if you look at the helmet just like that, it doesn't look very similar to that. But notice here. That line over here that's going inward, that line going over there. And if you want to trace that line, Here's how you could do it. Notice they're tracing that exact line and they made it a bit rounder and they made it like look like a separate thing. But I think it's clearly inspired by this one and it's designed to evoke the feelings of looking like that. So I might say what's what's so wrong about trying to copy Star Wars because it's a successful design. Well I would personally wouldn't mind Star Wars designs being copied, but I'm more of a fan of, of functional sci-fi. And the problem is, if, if you abandon the realistic helmet design with a visible visor, then you're detached from the, from the guardrails of realism. By that I mean, for example, the guardrails of realism, they, they force certain functionality into a design, so it can function like, um, I'll explain with this helmet, like the Arden helmet, for example. Notice, there's no way the user can see out of the helmet except for those viewing slits over here. Like the eyes are over here on the character inside and the eyes are over here. So there's no way the person can see out of it. And if the, the designer would be forced to actually use functional design, like think, if I put the, put the thing on my head, no, no, if I could make a replica, would I be able to see out of it? Person wouldn't. And some might say, okay, maybe there's a camera in the center. Okay, let, let's take that argument. However, then why do those eye shapes exist? They shouldn't be there then. And there are sci-fi designs that have um, certain abstract helmet design where, it, where it's like a camera in the front, it looks like an insect shape, and oh, well, that's not it. And I would like to show you some more designs where the Star Citizen developers really actually put the effort into making a complete realistic helmet that actually works out really well. So for example, over here, we have the inmate helmet. That's a screenshot I took myself. That's in the Clash of Prison, and that's the Clash of Prison armor you get when you go to the prison. Notice how, how nice this helmet looks compared to the other helmets in the game currently. Notice here, you got the, the visor integrated in the helmet shape. You can see the interior padding, and you have a nice glass shade on, on the top of it. I think the reason they put in that effort was because they needed the specific design, and it was shown off as sitcom, at CitizenCon, which means if there's CitizenCon something to present, then they're suddenly uh, increasing their effort, because that's the time where they're selling ships, and I guess the necessity was there to make a functional design for, for the person. Then you got here one of the older helmet design. Notice here, nice shape, functional, nice glass shader. It's one of the early helmets in the game. I think it's an Odyssey or one of the similar designs. Now, as a contrasting example, here's some really bad, uh, I'd call them tragedies of design, helmet design in this game. First of this thing, I think it's a, it's a total catastrophe. 
Because they're making an alien race, which they haven't designed yet, because there's currently no visible design of the Tavarin, which is supposedly some type of bird race. So they made the dropship that looks like a bird, has a beak, even in the front cockpit. And they made the helmet that looks like a beak of, of, of a bird. That's, that's a complete catastrophe that shouldn't be in the game. And some, there's, there's an art director that looked at it and said, okay, that's okay. Like, what the heck? Then we have this tragedy. It is this is sort of the problem how this game slowly turns into Fortnite because once a game developer like, like Cloud Imperium Games thinks, okay, if we can make money with subscriber items and weird helmet designs, then the incentive is to look for more and more extreme designs and more and more exaggerated shapes to appeal to the younger market of, of younger players below 25 who are more loose with their money in terms of uh, buying DLCs for games. So this, this helmet combines the worst features of it. It, it has that certain st stupid e extreme design and it looks like a Halloween mask and it avoids a nice glass shader, complex interior, complex exterior. So it's, it's a complete quote-unquote fun mask. And then of course we have the uh, Halloween designs. Again, there's no visible life support systems on this helmet, which means they are giving away a big part of the realism of the game is traded for some extra subscriber money for cool for cool Halloween helmets. Because if you make a game about space and swimming in space, having space suits that look realistic and like they have life support systems on them and some functionality, it's a critical part of the game. And that is being traded away for some quick extra money from subscriber for subscriber helmets. Now why should you care about realistic helmet design? Here's an example from let's stop this one from Cyberpunk 2077. Okay, that's the Trauma Team helmet. And notice that there's actually a visor, but it flips open so you can see the interior. Let's look at the detail. Look at, wait, it's picture. Notice it is very detailed, but there's no quote unquote cool looking detail just for the sake of looking cool, like you find on your helmets in, in Star Citizen. Like every detail in the sample, like you can examine it yourself if you find a, the link or just pause the video. Every piece of every piece of geometry in that helmet has a function to it. Everything. For example, let's look at the, the visor. Notice it's properly integrated into the helmet. You can see the interior, the you can see the padding for the head, and you can see the cap that the person is wearing, so the hair doesn't get in the way. And over here you got this latch. It's a bit like a real life latch. Like you, yeah, I can look at the thing and, and, and figure out what it's for. It's probably just to pull and release that part of the mask from it. Then you got data cables going in here. And here's my favorite part of the helmet. Notice these round things over here. And that's usually what you find on plastic hoses if you want to screw them tight on something. Notice the whole helmet is infused with functionality. It looks cool in sci-fi, but every bit is, is there for a functional reason to have. And that, that's something you don't find in Star Citizen Designs. That's probably some extra visor thingy. Now let's look at the rear side of the helmet. Uh, which we can find here, for example. <clears throat> Notice the hearing prote protection things. I assume they're hearing protections. The artist who made the helmet figured out how they would actually attach to the helmet to the design. Then at the rear you also have, again, data cables. It's probably some battery device. And data recording, not sure what that thing is. Now let's look at some space helmets in Cyberpunk. I haven't played this far in the game yet to actually see that helmet, so I'm not sure what it's for. Notice here, it's asymmetrical. Again, lamp on one side, not on both sides. Notice here the latch to open the helmet. Notice the safety pin. You have to pull out before you can open that, which means the guy who made the helmet figured out how it would actually functionally work to interact with the, this piece of equipment. Then you have probably a hose for some oxygen or something. Then the ring that latches onto the spacesuit. And in here, notice the padding. Proportionally correctly fitted to the character. And the thing is, I think most of the time in the game, you wouldn't even see that back part of the helmet. But they still finished it to an extremely high standard. You're not a single detail wasted on random cool, cool shapes. And the material definition is so good, you won't find it anywhere in Star Citizen on a helmet design like that. You know, that's what we have here in the video. Um, here's a Starkid helmet. I think a lot of people who watch the video want me to rant about that thing, but I'll keep that for the end. So, 
Now, the Sasana developers showed off this helmet in a recent ISC. And a lot of things wrong with this helmet. Now, some of you who read my forum posts might be wondering why I do not like this, this space suit. Or what, why do you have something to complain about it? Because it, I usually like functional sci fi designs. And this looks like a functional space suit design. So, what's wrong with it? So, it's two things that are wrong with it. <clears throat> First thing being, notice the visor. It's not transparent, which means you can't see the interior, which means the interior is probably not modeled. Again, that's laziness. You don't have to have complex reflectivity through the helmet and the way the light interacts with it, like you had, for example, over here. Yeah, that's the first part. The second problem is the symmetry of the helmet. Notice here, there's a symmetry axis right here, which means they only have to model half the helmet, and probably the same for the spacesuit, and be done with it. Half the work and get done sooner. There's only one asymmetrical part I can see here, which is the latch, I think. But compare that to the detail of that thing. And of course, the, the visible glass shader where you can see through it, which they left out over here. I think this is evidence how the developer is trying to push down the quality of the helmet designs. At the same time, turn it into some type of Fortnite um, monetization um, program. I think the reason for that is, is because they, um, they just figured out three or four years ago that they're getting so much money from all the promises which they haven't delivered yet, that they can afford reducing the quality of things. And I think that's not a good idea, and this is why I'm making the video. So let's talk about the Star Kitten Helmet. The thing is with the kidneys, they have a certain aesthetic if, if you like that. And you see streamer girls, for example, wear them very often. It, it, there's a certain feminine elegance to it. However, they should be like kidney or clip-on thingies a person could wear in the city if they want to. So as, as a part of normal civilian clothing, it shouldn't be integrated into helmet design. But some people might say, okay, there are kitten helmets in real life with, with those kidneys. However, <clears throat> Very few people would wear them, and I think most people in Star Citizen just wear them because there's a potential to irritate other players who do not like that. And you're basically, you know, creating a meme. Like, let me start from this way. Um, I think this helmet was designed as a as a fun experiment in, in a live stream by, by a concept artist, and then players liked it and wanted to have it in the game. And the popularity of the thing gets intensified by some people saying they don't want kitten or kitten beer stuff in the game. And then other people, out of, out of spite, out in spite of that, they want to like it even more. And now you have items in the game that get incentivized for the developer to make more of it based on some other players in the game not liking it. Which I think creates a spiral of, of sometimes really bad ideas for this game. And the second problem with this helmet is it fuses the cute, innocent kitten design with some very intimidating helmet that looks like it's copied from the Bane mask from Batman. I think there's something deranged in that if you fuse that innocent kitten design into some supposedly badass intimidating armor design. Because I think those two things should be kept separate. If you want cute kitten designs, okay, like add some clip on headgear thingies, whatever, or if players want to have it, but it coming pre-designed as, as a combat helmet, it, it just doesn't make sense. And I think it's, it's, I wouldn't call it dangerous, but I think it's a bit um, reckless to, as a developer, make designs based on spites, what some players do not like. Because then you're playing one part of the community against the other. 